I don't know if Mariner's ever going to be able to look at any of the crew in the same way after seeing what she did in that simulation. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to my channel where I like to talk about all the geeky pop culture that I like, enjoy and consume, including things like Doctor Who, the MCU and Star Trek. So if you like any of that stuff, do hit that subscribe button below for more like this. But today we're talking about Star Trek because weekly reviews of Star Trek Lower Decks are what I'm doing at the moment. So uh, we're up to, what is it, episode eight? I think episode eight, I Excretus, a title that it is only relevant to like one little bit at the end of the episode. But um, clearly they liked it enough to put it as the title. There will be spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen the episode, go away. Um, watch it and come back. If you want to know just generally what I thought about it, I thought it was quite good. Um, there, there was sort of... I liked it and I liked a lot of the things but I was also kind of expecting something else and therefore my own expectations left me a little bit disappointed because I'll come out of it. I was hoping for a whole episode set either in the Mirror Universe or a simulation of the Mirror Universe and we got maybe like two minutes of it in the, of the Mirror Universe stuff so but there was a lot of other good stuff so let's get to that. Spoilers from now on in. I hate to start off with a negative, but the opening, which was something that most of the opening had been in a trailer, the whole them being on the ship, admiring the beauty, and then uh, being on, on the, the satellite or wherever it was on the surface, and then the ship sort of warping out and leaving them there because they'd had an emergency distress call and they'd forgotten that the our four main lower decks people were on, <laughs> were doing a spacewalk on this satellite. That while funny in itself had been in the trailer and so it wasn't particularly new and it didn't really go anywhere afterwards even it didn't feel like it was linking into the plot until right at the end and right at the end I got why it was there given given how the main plot resolved itself but at the front end when I was watching it I was a little bit disappointed with that opening it was kind of a bit of a oh I mean, we've seen all that already, and in the trailers, most of it, and it, it was a bit underwhelming. I don't know. I mean, it did tie in later on, so I guess I'll forgive it for that. While our characters kind of get separated into their individual little tiny mini storylines, the bulk of this plot is effectively one story of the a drill sergeant coming to the Cerritos to drill the crew, and they're going to be put through their paces in little... Very cute little mini hollow pods, like little drill pods that are miniature little one-person holodecks. And uh, they get put into their own situations. And what they're going to do is they're going to switch the lower decks and the upper ranks. So in these simulations, the lower decks will be have the roles of high-ranking officers. And the high-ranking officers will have the, uh, the uh, rank of lower decks. And... Uh, I could see where they were going with this. It was going to be a story of learning, you know, to appreciate the other side. Because they're always sniping at each other throughout all of this. It's a big part of the show. And this was going to be an episode where they learnt that, oh, the other side has it tough. It was cut, It was a little bit predictable. But how we got there, there was some enjoyable stuff. So we obviously get all of our lower decks, our main cast's individual little scenarios that they go into in these pods. Uh, Mariner, first of all, goes into the Mirror Universe, and as I said already, because we'd seen some Mirror Universe stuff in the trailers, I was kind of hoping there would be a whole episode of, I love a Mirror Universe episode, I was kind of hoping there would be a whole Mirror Universe episode, if not real Mirror Universe, then simulated Mirror Universe would have been fine, holodeck Mirror Universe would have been fine, I just would have liked a whole episode of it, so I'm a little bit disappointed there. Um... Because this, these holopods simulate situations that previous Star Trek crews have been in. So, of course, they're situations that we, the audience, have seen in other Star Trek shows. Um, like the movies as well, and TNG, and the original series. So, the Mirror Universe one is an original series one. But Mariner fails pretty much instantly when Mirror Universe Boimler, who is plotting to kill or take over as the captain, uh, kill, uh, get on the side of or kill the captain... Uh, immediately susses her out because she uses the wrong hand to salute or something and she's it sort of instantly fails tendy is given the uh, i think it was a it was a tng episode where there was a klingon wanting to have a ritual suicide 
and the moral dilemma of should a doctor assist with that or not and yeah she basically the whole joke of this one is that she fails because she doesn't help kill him and they do a whole bit of like sort of equivalent of trying to keep him alive like uh, the other medical people call it that he is alive and he has been saved and he's like no um that one was probably the weakest one for me i there wasn't i you know it was kind of referencing back to a tng episode but overall it just wasn't that funny the rutherford one was the star trek 2 wrath of khan situation where the warp core is going to explode and rutherford in the scotty role uh has to try and go in and, and stop it but uh obviously in in the plot of the real star trek that's when uh spock turns up and and goes in in his place but here he's going anyway he fails as well and then you get boimler who doesn't fail he's the only one of the crew of the, the lower decks that does not fail their test and act he's in in the borg ship and um he succeeds he gets out of the borg ship he manages to escape and does so quite spectacularly but he gets 74 percent, and he's not happy with that he wants a better score than that so he demands to go back in <laughs> and he does it again and he gets an even better score he's still not happy and he does said so that i think that time he rescues the borg babies the next time he rescues the borg babies and some drones and he keeps on going back in and back in and back in he wants that perfect score um i really liked this i really like seeing boimler as the action hero here and it kind of i like the way it it references like how much he's changed since the beginning of the show and actually he does have really good command qualities and as we find out later when we find out that actually all of these things were rigged he manages to beat this even though it was rigged and he manages to uh, you know be the perfect commander in this situation and i think that does a lot to show how far he has come and how far you know he actually would make a good commander and i'm imagining at some point you know towards the end of this show's life he will get that promotion eventually and maybe become a you know second in command or something like that mariner also keeps retrialing boimler's retrying because he's not happy he hasn't got a perfect score mariner just wants to pass so she does like multiple scenarios uh she does the western scenario and other sort of uh, is, uh well that's a is that referencing back to tng or tos i think there's been western episodes in both of them haven't there so it could be either it's it's a trope um and there she's trampled by a horse and then she does naked time <laughs> which is where the whole one of those episodes where the whole um crew has contracted a virus which makes them uh, very aggressive and very horny so everyone's either fighting or having sex and in this version everyone seems to be having sex because she walks into the mess hall and there's just like there's just a big orgy going on and she like, traumatizes her and uh, <laughs> uh apart from one moment where she sees i think it's what was it um oh, i can't remember her name now the andorian jennifer the andorian and um another female crew member who are making out and she's that's the one moment where she stops being disgusted and goes oh um like she's interested referencing probably the fact that i mean the creators have mentioned that she's bisexual so she's she's obviously curious about those the fact that those two are maybe she fancies both of those two and hey um nice that we get a little reference to it there anyway but this whole thing traumatizes her and she just wants to fail this one as quickly as possible so that she gets out of it. And so even at the point where there's a, I think an airlock is open and she's going into space, she's like, Fletch, that failed, stop the simulation. Um, this was probably my favorite funniest moment of the, all the scenarios. Because some of the scenarios, I mean, the Rutherford one and the Tendi one, they were okay, but they weren't. There was nothing in them that I found massively funny. I appreciated the references back to past Trek, but I didn't find them particularly funny. This one, however, I did find quite hilarious. So after they've all failed these, including the captain and the 
bridge crew who in their own one have to put up with being lower decks and uh, clearly find out how frustrating it is to never be given any information because in their simulation there's uh, the ships being attacked by multiple people there's the gem hadar cues apparently on the ship and all they get is people coming in higher ranking officers coming into where they're stacking crates and saying have you seen q has q gone through here and they they want to know what's going on and they're like don't worry about it just carry on doing what you're doing and they run off and they realize how frustrating it is to not be given the information to be treated like rubbish and and when they're living in the crew quarters initially they think hey this isn't too bad uh, even the cramped conditions you know we get to uh, just sort of stand around and and not have to do very much and not have the responsibility and the stress but then then they find out when this all kicks off that they're the kind of subjected and uh, left to not informed not included and how that makes them feel um and then so when they all come back together outside of the simulation and everyone has failed they come to the conclusion that yes this was all to make them realize how the other half lives and how you know it's not as cushy everyone thinks the other side is cushy the grass is always greener all that sort of stuff but actually both sides have their own problems and both sides have their own issues and stresses and things that make their lives not very nice so the, there's now a deeper understanding between the two sides and that's lovely and they take this to the um to the person the the drill sergeant says we realize you were just trying to teach us this mission this uh, this message to which she's the drill sergeant goes like <laughs> evil cackling laugh of course evil cackling laugh and then says no i just wanted you all to fail to prove that my scheme was worthwhile so that i basically they don't make me redundant because they were starting to think that it wasn't worth doing this so i needed a crew that would bound to fail so i picked you because you're like even the captain that left four of your people on a spacewalk where you went off to uh save someone and didn't realize you'd left them behind hence uh, the opening is relevant but uh, i mean to get to this point and then the opening being relevant it just it took a long time to get there at the time i still say the opening was a bit lackluster but i get now why it was included when we got to this point so they now realize that she can't submit it until all the simulations are complete to starfleet and boimler's still in there trying to get his perfect score and he's about to get it he's about to get 100 percent and be the all-action hero in the borg simulation and the captain orders him to stay in there and not complete it because they need to get her the drill sergeant to amend all of their scores so that they don't all get I don't know, fired and reassigned to different ships or reassigned to different ships. So poor Boimler on the verge of his perfect score then has to stay in there. And because he's staying in there longer than he needs to, his score starts going down because the Borg start getting an upper hand. And uh, meanwhile, all the other crew are taking the drill sergeant into real life, dangerous situations, scary situations to because she's not someone who has ever been in the field and faced them so she doesn't they say their point is she doesn't know what she's talking about and uh yeah that, again this was nice i liked seeing the team the bridge crew and the lower decks all work together as a sort of coherent unit and uh it was yeah it was it was nice and eventually she gets so scared that she agrees to change. They basically blackmail her into changing the scores. Like, basically, we will keep doing this to you unless you change our scores to good ones. <laughs> um, which she does. And then she resigns. And everyone lives happily ever after. And they have a better understanding of each other. They eventually let Boimler out. He's, his score has dropped to, like, 8%. He's been assimilated by the Borg. He is I excretus, like, um, Locutus, but excretus. And he's a bit traumatised uh you know it it was it was good i the things i liked about this episode i liked all the references back to previous trek and the fact that they i did i like despite wanting more mirror universe stuff i did also appreciate the fact that we got to see multiple different situations that was good i really liked the boimler one seeing him get some uh, a chance to show what he's learned and put it into practice and 
show that he's grown as a person and can actually be a good commander uh, and and stake some authority. I liked the Mariner uh, stuff with the, especially the naked time. And later on when she's on the, the bridge and in, in a sort of real life simulation where she on the real bridge has to act like the captain. Uh, she sees, um, uh, what's his name? Strax, the, the head of security. He is just like, he's doing some stretches because he's got a bad back from sleeping on the bank and she just like momentarily sees him naked again and that freaks her out and uh <laughs> so i liked that i wasn't that fast with the other with tendy and rutherford's felt a bit weak their scenarios um and there wasn't really much done with them on a character level this episode uh, i did like also the fact that the crew did learn to appreciate each other and at the end the upper decks give the lower decks a new replicator that can do a wider range of food quite why replicators have a limit on what kind of food they can do anyway i'm not sure it's a replicator should be able to make anything but there you go um but it, but apparently it can so a bit of a mixed episode i liked some of it some individual moments of it a lot the theme was good but there was just it just what well, didn't quite make me laugh out loud apart from the naked time bit which i did actually laugh out loud look let me know what you thought of this episode i am i being too harsh on it maybe i don't know it just didn't quite grip me in, in the way that some have um let me know maybe maybe it was my own expectations maybe i went in expecting a mirror universe episode and i was just carried that disappointment through it and that affected my enjoyment of it i don't know let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'll be back next week for another review. So do hit subscribe if you haven't already and tune in then. See you soon.